PhotoVoice is a qualitative method that uses images and narratives to explain a phenomenon of a community. Developed through the Ferrian model, PhotoVoice is a methodology that engages individuals in the current social discourse from start to the end of the inquiry. It is based on core principles, creativity, sustainability, partnership, culture sensitivity, and choice. In the spring semester of 2020, the CBPR class had to make a choice to make a major pivot in response to a global pandemic. This is my family at the end of our family happy hour and game night. Six cities, three different states, and one family always looking for little moments of happiness even in crisis. My favorite additions to my new at-home desk setup a candle and hot tea in my mug that says, bear with me. To everyone I interact with over the next few months, bear with me as I push through the rest of the semester as an online student. My mom and I beg to distress and work through antsiness. Each day after we make a new treat, like this cake, pieces slowly get eaten, serving as a snapshot calendar of our weeks in quarantine. Walking outside and taking a moment to experience greenery around me helps to brighten my days. Feeling the life around me reminds me of another favorite pastime, Bon Appetit's fermentation-based video series, It's Alive with Brad. This is my mashup of the two. It's alive, not going places. This is a picture of the Fox Theater in Oakland. It's normally very vibrant and colorful, and there are a lot of people outside it usually, but seeing it closed up is a new normal for the foreseeable future. My roommate and I leave our groceries outside of our house so that we can sanitize them before we bring them inside. This is a new way we have to go grocery shopping and it's a very arduous process. My yoga teacher Ashley has started offering donation-based virtual classes on Zoom a few times a week. It's been helpful for me to take intentional time to breathe and move every day. I also appreciate how technology allows continued connection, even across physical distance. I'm not a huge gardener, but I planted these fava beans for my dad earlier this year. I find myself checking on their progress every day since we've started sheltering in place. I feel like I derive some peace and comfort from knowing that the world continues to grow and bloom even when we're not out in it. Classes moving online and the quarantine have caused my mind to move into the sky. I can't focus during class, I'm not allowed to leave my room, and I daydream often. Having a computer, a desk, and a workspace for online classes come with the cost of no video camera for my classmates to see me. I feel curtained off, I feel more easily distracted, and I feel less engaged. This is a photo of an empty toilet paper aisle at a North Berkeley Safeway, which is definitely very anxiety and stress inducing. And the next photo is of the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza um, before quarantine and during quarantine from NBC, which really shows what life during COVID-19 has been like. On my quarantine walks, I always see chalk drawings done by the kids in the neighborhood. And it reminds me of the ability of the imagination to transcend the current reality. And I think that childhood innocence is something that's keeping me going during this time. My friend also recently just had a baby and new life coming into the world reminds me that in all the death caused by this virus, there's always going to be a new cycle of change. I find myself reflecting and writing during this time. I write about my feelings of fear, anxiety, and uncertainty. I also write about joy, love, and connection. These shoes may not have been out in a while, but the path and journey I will always be on is grounded by values of transformation, liberation, love, and beloved community. When we received notice that all classes would be online and that the campus would be closed, I began searching Craigslist for a desk and chair. I didn't have the appropriate setup at home as I relied on the desks, chairs, and Wi-Fi offered by the school. This picture is unfocused, much like how I feel when attending online lectures. The lecture may be taking place, but it's hard to focus with so much going on around me. During this pandemic, I still find time to do my makeup and find joy in doing so. I stay connected with the broader transgender community and old friends through social media, especially on Transgender Day of Visibility, to really highlight the beauty of our community. 
I have also started doing challenges on Nike Run Club to be accountable for working out during this pandemic. The time outside is much needed and the simple beauty of nature is very grounding in these uncertain times. Online instruction may bring about so many pulleys and levers for action at our disposal, but alas, one feels paralyzed, almost stagnant at times or disengaged from this new world. We sit back and gaze blankly away. Our team debriefs with the professor. We smile, I surmise because we were able to make good things happen, but this was only possible because we had each other and were in it together, albeit virtually. Every day I take a walk and come across the following sign. It says, hi neighbors, if you are in need of support to get groceries or emergency supplies, we'd love to help. In a time of social isolation, it's comforting to know that I'm surrounded by blind love and support. For me, health and wellness during shelter in place means taking long drives and even stumbling upon the beach. In the beginning, when our communities were required to shelter in place, it was a quick and sudden transition to online schooling for myself and working from home for my sister. Living together in a small San Francisco apartment, we have been working in close proximity. The first couple of weeks of online classes, I would phone into the Zoom call from either my bed or couch. In recent, we have set up a desk with a desktop monitor in front of our window as an at-home workstation. This encourages me to get out of bed and create a designated space for school. Chatsworth Country Deli is usually busy from open to close. Customer favorites include pancakes and coffee for breakfast, sandwiches stuffed with deli meats for lunch, and a delicious matzo ball soup prepared daily by my father for dinner. While most of his colleagues are laid off, my father remains one of the few employed to prepare food for takeout. While many are adjusting to working from home during shelter in place, my father is unsure about how long his job will remain secure, and as a primary breadwinner of his household, what that means to those who financially depend on him. As recommended by public health professionals in the CDC, I am learning to love my family from a distance, keeping them safe. In the meantime, we virtually spend time together, waiting for the curve to flatten and to be in each other's presence once again. As Rosa calls me a social media sensation, Dude, come here. <laughs> My name is Rosa. Rosa brings me laughter. Let me find out. When these dark times will end. A lot of people will be scared. But we'll get through this together till the very end. <laughs> what it's like to suddenly be an online student. The first photo showcases my workstation. But the photo is blurry to represent how I feel like my vision might be getting worse since I started being an online student. The second photo also showcases my workstation but it's showing my struggles to find an ergonomically correct position so that I can protect my neck while also keeping up with the many readings. It's hard being an away student. I worry about friends and family back home. I can't be with them, but technology allows us to be together even if we are thousands of miles apart. This time presents challenges. How can I protect my family? Sometimes all you can do is step outside and take a deep breath. When the stay-at-home order first happened, I was taking advantage of rainy days to get outside when there wouldn't be crowds. The desk in my bedroom is where I spend all of my time now. I spend probably 80% of every day here. At least I have a window to look out of. Sitting on my computer for endless Zoom calls has been exhausting. I've been coping by taking up tactile hobbies like knitting. To bring a bit of nature indoors, I'm growing seeds to start a garden. They're isolated now, but will eventually intermingle with each other outdoors when they're ready. For the last week, my mom's been sewing masks nonstop to send to our family and friends across three states. Being separated has been really hard on my family, but keeping busy is helping her to feel less anxious, and I feel a little better knowing my family is doing what we can to help keep ourselves and others safe. While moving to online classes and Zoom calls has been extremely stressful, it helps to be able to have my emotional support animal with me during class. My partner works in an emergency department. When he gets home, he puts all his work clothes in a garbage bag outside the front door and immediately takes a shower. It's not a perfect system, but it's the best we can do for some peace of mind. Runs to the grocery store feel surreal, unfamiliar, and with as much social distance as physical distance. The speed at which the now familiar scene of masks and lines became normal is a testament to our adaptability, but it also makes me uneasy. Cooking and creating new recipes with my girls has been my mental relief. 
I enjoy listening to their laughs while we prepare meals. We're creating memories that will last beyond COVID-19. My desk's life has gone from minimalist to disarray. Having access to more devices has made me less productive. I have more distractions. Continual screen time is not helping my mental health. It's difficult to focus and try to continue doing things that were normal before the pandemic. This meme dog represents how I feel using sarcasm. This is not fine, but I'm doing my best. I've been experiencing pain from sitting in uncomfortable chairs and positions at home all day. I can't sit for long periods of time. I made the standing desk from benches I have for my dining table. I recently purchased a new chair which will help, but it was expensive. Moving to online instruction has been a challenge. My attention span isn't great and I find myself unsuccessfully multitasking during classes. Here you can see multiple tabs open while I'm in a Zoom lecture and a missing assignment. The next photo is of the This Is Fine dog. The world is in crisis mode, but the workload in most classes is continuing as usual. It's hard to concentrate on classes and school during a pandemic. I'm watching the world from the confines of my home, feeling trapped. From my front porch, I can see signs of spring and new hope. This is a photo of my family and I blowing bubbles, which allowed us to tap into our silly sides and brought us laughter in what's been an otherwise heavy time. I'm sharing this photo as a reminder of a community building workshop I once attended. The yarn serves as a reminder of the ways in which we are interconnected even when we are remaining distance and brings me comfort in difficult times. On days when I cannot stand on my own two feet, I use two wheels. Whether I am coping with life or cycling, one thing is for certain. In order for me to keep my balance, I need to keep moving forward. Through reading, I am living vicariously. Unable to travel due to the outbreak, literature is my escapism. It enables me to explore new worlds and discover new realities. Here, I am finally free. This has now become the spot where I do my classwork, meet with friends, and eat all my meals. I never imagined that I would be an online student. I know that I personally don't have the discipline to be able to work on long-term projects on my own and not be distracted by home things. So it's been a really difficult transition for me. I've developed a new hobby during life hauled up at home, practicing social distancing, and that's really raising plants. I never really saw myself as someone who would take care of plants. I often forget to drink water, so how could I even take care of a plant, right? But really, during this time when we're all kind of stuck at home, ruminating, uncertain of what the future holds, and perhaps stressing out too, it's been really grounding for me at least to take stock of the moment and to just think about my plants, anything other than myself. So I've been nesting a lot these days, and it's been helpful for, for me at least to have some level of control in my life. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. This altar represents the traditional spiritual practice of my family. My best friend's family member was in the hospital due to COVID and lighting a candle and sending a positive intention was the best way I can support my extended fam family while being away and keep me grounded and grateful. My mom raised my sisters and I by herself with limited resources, but we made the most out of it. On spring break, we were supposed to explore the Bay Area and go on vacation. This is my mom making the best of our situation while on vacation. These are the values our CVPR class derived from this Voice Project. What's your story?